Welcome back to Fox and Friends. As the 2024 presidential race heats up, the New York Times talking to a New Hampshire voter questioning the legitimacy of Vivek, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy's campaign. Yeah, the Times claiming, quote, New Hampshire cynics don't quite know how seriously to take him. Victoria Gula, 50 years old, of Spofford, New Hampshire, questioned whether he was part of a backroom deal with Mr. Trump to help take out Mr. DeSantis in exchange for a position in the next Trump administration. In the way she thinks Chris Christie, the former New York, New Jersey governor, helped take down Senator Marco Rubio in New Hampshire in 2016. GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is here to react. Vivek, I believe you're in Michigan in the middle of an event right now. Thanks for taking some time right. for us. So what do you make of this theory planted by a voter but amplified by the New York Times that you're really just there to help Donald Trump get rid of DeSantis? Look, I take any hit piece from the New York Times as a badge of honor. But I'll also tell you, later in that piece, and the guy was traveling with us, he saw what he did. We draw big crowds in New Hampshire. One of the people who actually stood up at that same event was somebody who walked in with the Trump shirt, broke down in tears as he asked the question, thinking about the country and what we were doing for his children, said he was switching over to vote for me. I'm absolutely running for the presidency. We're running for the win to take this all the way. And, you know, I'll tell you this. I'm the only millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. I'm doing this for the next generation. And I'm in this race because I think we can take Trump's agenda even further than Donald Trump ever did. I tell those audiences, America first does not belong to Trump, doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people of this country. And I think that we can unite the country in the process. So, so thank you. Vivek, here, so here's one of the things that I, I, I think about, because I like a lot of what you have to say, and I like a lot of what Trump did. And so people look at the Trump presidency and the things that he got wrong. And a lot of it was because he wasn't familiar with government. He was sort of learning on the job about that. Um, people could say the same thing about you, that maybe you guys are supporting the same agenda, but he's been there and kind of knows where all the landmines are versus you. So I'll, I'll say three things. It's a great point. First is I'm going to build on the foundation that he laid. He pointed out a lot of problems that we now understand what they are. Now's the time to solve them. I also come to this, and I know you all are familiar with some of my work, some of my books, et cetera, with a deep understanding of the Constitution and a commitment to it. And I think that we will go further with the agenda than Trump did if we do it based on constitutional principles, first principles and moral authority, not just vengeance and grievance. So, yes, I am an outsider, and I think it takes an outsider to mm -hmm. take on the administrative state in China. But it also takes somebody who has a deep, bone deep understanding and commitment to the Constitution. And I think that's the unique combination that I'm looking to bring to the table. The last president who did that was Ronald Reagan. On first principles, he went further than anyone ever had. I think we have an opportunity to do the same thing in 2024 and unite the country in the process, Rachel. So that's why I'm in this race. Well, Vivek, to your point, you're right. We know a lot about you. And one of the things I think we can I think I can speak for everybody that we appreciate is your recommitment and and constant hearkening back to first principles. It will be difficult because that's going to always require, you know, what we, I think I've read about the various departments that you want to you want to roll back, you, you know, from the intelligence agencies to the DOE um, in order to accomplish living by those first principles. So the question is, will you be able to accomplish it? Let's apply it to one issue. For example, you've been talking sure. about social media. You've been talking about TikTok. Yep. You've been talking about all of these these invasions of our privacy, while at the same time balancing the desire for First Amendment issues and free speech. Tell me about what you've been noticing on TikTok and what you could actually do to help Americans. Well, one of the things that stands out to me about TikTok, Will, is that the Chinese arm of the company, so the Chinese employees, have access to data points like which young Americans are viewing what they call gay videos or LGBT videos. Now, I have a problem with the addictive potential of many of those videos and how they're corrupting young Americans. But the point here is a different one. Why does the Chinese Communist Party need access to that level of individual data? Think about it. It is to exert leverage over the long run. They're thinking over 10, 20 year time horizons to actually deputize even individual Americans to advance their agenda. It's the same reason the Chinese Communist Party demands that Airbnb, I'm not making this up, hands over the user data of Americans, even private messages sent on the Airbnb platform, the Wall Street Journal reported this a couple of years ago, to the CCP as a condition for doing business over there. So a couple of things I'd say there, Will, is on the social media and addictive social media point, I think if you can't smoke an addictive cigarette by the age of 18 or have an addictive drink of alcohol by the age of 21, 
I don't think you should be allowed to use an addictive mm. social media product under the age of 16 or 15 either. How do I tie that to my liberty minded first principles, Will? It's mm -hmm. this. Kids aren't the same as adults. OK, so part of the bargain of free freedom in a country is that as an adult, you get to make the choice, even a wrong one. But kids aren't the same. So whether that's genital mutilation or puberty blockers or the use of TikTok, that's a familiar notion to us that if you're 14 or 15, that just doesn't make sense. And so that's how I'm updating kind of the Ronald Reagan 1980 vision, but bringing it to the year 2023 to address the unique challenges of our time. That's what we're going to need in the conservative movement, not just reciting old slogans, but take the spirit of those slogans and meet the challenges of today. And as, as I said, the first millennial ever to run in our party for the presidency, that's part of my responsibility to actually do it. Well said. Well said, yeah. Vivek, um, we have another one, one last topic we can get to really quick. You say that the nuclear family is the best form of governance. I think that's been a big problem in general for our country, that we have stopped relying on the family to do things that it should be doing, giving it to the government and to bureaucrats who don't really care. So, look, actually, this is one of the things I think we can do better in the conservative movement. We rail against big government. Let's talk about the best form of governance known to mankind. That is the nuclear family. Today, 25 percent of kids staggeringly are born into single parent households. Kids born into single parent households are twice as likely or 10 percent plus more likely to commit rape, to get and end up in prison, to actually even end up leaving and running away from their home. What do you think causes this social instability, the mental health epidemic we're seeing across our country? And the same the shame, Rachel, is that we as a government, the people in government have actually created the incentives for that paying, for example, mm -hmm. black mothers in the inner city more to actually have a single family home rather than to be married. I'm going to roll that back and actually revive the family as something that we've forgotten in this country. That's the foundation of what it means to be an American. Yeah. Bring back marriage, bring back family, bring back personal responsibility. I love it. Thank All right. We'll good. make it cool again. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Thanks, Vivek. Mm. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>